got a new song here and it's called To Have a Vision. I've got a spring in my step and I'm on the way and I'm looking Have a vision. Good morning, people of God. Welcome to worship. We are so, so, so glad that you uh, have set aside some time to gather with us for worship uh, this morning, this afternoon, this evening, wherever and whenever you happen to be gathering. Thank you so much for joining us for worship today. Uh, I'm coming to you from the front entrance of All Saints Lutheran Church, which, as you can see, has a lovely new edition of a fence and several orange cones and also oh yeah an, an awning how exciting is that isn't that awesome uh, there's so many cool things happening here right now uh, we are making some awesome progress on the new drive up and uh, port and entryway here at All Saints and we're excited about everything that's happening so uh, thank you thank you thank you to everybody who is helping out with this project who is coming in and, and doing random stuff our awesome construction crew uh, and our great property committee uh, all the folks that are helping make this happen uh, and of course all of you who have donated uh, time talents treasure toward this project thank you thank you thank you for the ways that you give back to and support the mission and ministry here at All Saints Lutheran Church uh, there are a few things happening today in worship it's Trinity Sunday we're very excited about that um, there, that means that uh, this is the day of the church year where we kind of step back and focus on uh, the doctrine of the Trinity and our understanding of God as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and uh, discuss that a little bit more in depth. Um, so look forward to some of those conversations and echoes in our prayers and in our songs throughout our worship service today. We are very, 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 very excited to be welcoming presiding bishop of the ELCA, Elizabeth Eaton, uh, who is sharing a message with all of the congregations of the ELCA today. Uh, so she has recorded a, uh, the gospel and a sermon for us, and so uh, we are excited to have her uh, joining us and leading us uh, in preaching for worship today. That's very, very awesome, uh, and it'll be great to have her speak. Uh, so uh, if you have not yet grabbed a bulletin for worship today, I highly recommend that you go ahead and do that now. There should be a link to that in the comments thread for this video, uh, or you can always go to www.allsaintscg.org. Click on worship, and uh, right there you're going to find uh, Sunday, June 7th, Trinity Sunday, and a copy of the bulletin, as well as options for two different children's bulletins that you can download uh, and utilize. No age requirement necessary there. Feel free to color at your leisure, uh, regardless of your age, and join us for worship in that way today. What else is happening this week? Well, a lot, right? There's still a lot of things happening. Those of you who follow us up for our Thursday Bible study, which, by the way, is happening still every Thursday morning at 10 o'clock, we're on Facebook Live for that. Um, but those of you who join us on a regular basis noticed that this past week we did something a little bit different. Last Thursday, in lieu of Pastor Jules or Vicar John or I standing there in front of you and 
doing kind of a recorded uh, Bible study message, we decided to lift up some of the voices of uh, people of color in our midst, uh, both pastors and lay people, musicians, uh, and others who uh, talked a little bit, uh, prayed with us, um, and you know, we had some good conversation around uh, the concepts of anti-racism, uh, the, the work that is being done in congregations and in denominations around the country and around the world. Uh, there, that video playlist is still up. There'll be a link to that in the comment section here. You should go and take a look at it. There are 15 different videos there, um, ranging from pastors to musicians uh, and everyone in between, uh, folks talking about redlining and racial profiling and practices, uh, systematic racism. Uh, please, please, please take a moment and pick one of those videos. Sit down and learn a little bit. Uh, we're in a very difficult and challenging time uh, in the context of our society right now. What an opportunity to l listen and learn and engage and figure out how it is that we can bring our faith to the table to engage uh, as a people of faith in a more effective way in our world, uh, even in the midst of pandemic, right? So uh, we encourage you to take a look at those videos uh, and commend them to you for your viewing. This week, this coming week, uh, is VBS. Well, it was supposed to be VBS here on site at All Saints, but circumstances being what they are, we will not be having it on site. That said, we do have a ton of people who have signed up to do Vacation Bible School in their homes. Uh, Miss Leah has set up some amazing curriculum. We've sent all that information out to folks already, and we're going to be uh, doing Vacation Bible School together from afar. Uh, as we as we do that this week. So uh, have fun with that. If you missed the deadline to sign up for that this time, never fear. We're going to be doing another round of VBS in July and then a third round of VBS at the beginning of August. A full week of curriculum that's going to come out of our partner camp at Luther Crest Bible Camp up in Alexandria, Minnesota. So we're very excited for all of these different opportunities to engage uh, with our young people and our families throughout the summer. So continue to look for more information about those things. If you feel like you missed out on an email or didn't get signed up and want to make sure you get in for the next round, let us know. Throw a comment in the stream right here or shoot me or Leah an email. We'll be happy to make sure that we get you on those lists so that you can get signed up with your family for next time. We'd love, love, love to have you. Uh, many of you have asked uh, how you can help with what's happening in the world around us right now. Uh, there have been posts pretty much daily on our Facebook page, and we're working on getting those onto our website as well, that name some of the needs that our ministry partners have around the Twin Cities. So we are partnering with a number of different organizations, but primarily with two. That is Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in South Minneapolis, and also uh, Bethlehem on the Midway Lutheran Church in St. Paul. Uh, we have had relationships with both of those congregations for years, uh, but their needs and their work right now is uh, incredible. So we continue to send them supplies, uh, support them financially, send volunteers. If you are interested in getting more involved, uh, either as a volunteer or looking for ways to contribute to either one of those ministries and the work that they're doing in our community, please, please, please let us know. There will be links to both of those churches' websites in this stream, and also you can find those on our Facebook page and on our website, or just Googling. Either of those churches will bring up their websites. Uh, they're putting out new needs daily, uh, sometimes multiple times a day as needs change, so be sure to check back often uh, with the folks in the ministry that is happening there so that you can be involved in any way that you would care to uh, as we as a community come together uh, in in solidarity around all of the different things that are happening around us right now. So again, if you have any questions about any of those things that are happening, please, please, please reach out to Pastor Jules, myself, uh, Haley in the office has a ton of great information. Give us a call, shoot us an email, we will get back to you, we will connect to you however we possibly can because we are the church better together and we're doing everything that we can to be the best that we can be, to show up, do good, and be kind in this time. Oh, all right, there are probably a ton of other things happening. Uh, we will post more announcements about other things that are happening, both in the links to this video uh, and on our Facebook page. Check out our website. We will continue to keep you posted. If you know of something that's happening, make sure that you're letting us know. We don't, we don't see everything, so help us out. Make sure that you are, uh, we all are in the loop together as we try to figure out how to be the church in this time. And with that, people of God, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice 
and be glad in it. And as we rejoice and as we sing and as we pray and worship together today, I invite you to breathe. Breathe in the Holy Spirit. Breathe and pray and find peace in this time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of heaven and earth, before the foundation of the universe and the beginning of time, you are the triune God, author of creation, eternal word of salvation, life-giving spirit of wisdom. Guide us to all truth by your spirit that we may proclaim all that Christ has revealed and rejoice in the glory he shares with us. Glory and praise to you, creator of the universe, Jesus Christ, the light of the world, and the Holy Spirit, who gives us life and breath. 
now and forever. Amen. The first reading for Trinity Sunday comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from The Message by Eugene H. Peterson. The Way of Love. If I speak with human eloquence and angelic ecstasy but do not love, I am nothing but the creaking of a rusty gate. If I speak God's word with power, revealing all his mysteries and making everything plain as day, and if I have faith that says to a mountaintop, jump, and it jumps, but I don't love, I am nothing. If I give everything I own to the poor, and even go to the stake to be burned as a martyr, but I don't love, I've gotten nowhere. So no matter what I say, what I believe, and what I do, I am bankrupt without love. Love never gives up. Love cares more for others than for self. Love doesn't want what it doesn't have. Love doesn't strut. Love doesn't have a swelled head. It doesn't force itself on others. It isn't always me first, doesn't fly off the handle, doesn't keep score of the sins of others, doesn't revel when others grovel, doesn't take it takes pleasure in the flowering of truth. It puts up with anything. It trusts God always, always looks for the best, never looks back, but keeps going to the end. Love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday, Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limits. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. When I was an infant at my mother's breast, I gurgled and cooed like any infant. When I grew up, I left those infant ways for good. We don't yet see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through a mist, but it won't be long before the weather clears and the sun shines bright. We'll see it all then, see it all as clearly as God sees us, knowing him directly just as he knows us. But for right now, until that completeness, we have three things to do to lead us toward that consummation. Trust steadily in God, hope unswervingly, love extravagantly, and the best of the three is love. Word of God, Word of Life. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this morning is Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You whose glory is chanted above the heavens, out of the mouths of infants and children. You have set up a fortress against your enemies to silence the foe and avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars you have set in their courses, what are mere mortals that you should be mindful of them? Human beings that you should care for them. Yet you have made them little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. You have made them rule over the works of your hands. You have put all things under their feet, all flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field, the birds of the air, the fish of the sea, and whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Halle, halle, hallelujah.
The Gospel lesson for Holy Trinity Sunday is from the 28th Gospel from St. Matthew, verses 16 through 20, and reads, Now the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where the disciples were directed by Jesus. When they saw Jesus, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded to you. And remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. This is the gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, people of God. I just got back from a two-day silent retreat where I spent time by the water, listening to the wind, and reflecting upon how important it is to listen. To say that the last two weeks have been insanely intense would be to put it mildly. It is a daunting task to stand before you today and preach because the Word of God is being used to create division instead of connection, cruelty instead of caring, and hatred instead of love. I think it's time that we need to breathe in the Holy Spirit again. And let's also call for the aid of the paraclete, the pneuma, to walk right alongside of us. Both names of the Holy Spirit that remind us that we are not alone, even during turbulent times. I think that the Spirit came down upon us on Pentecost and it was a call for repentance which simply means to turn around and go the other way to change to transform it is time for change and we do that by listening and listening very close as closely to the voices of those around us, particularly people that don't look like us. Pastor Tanner posted on Thursday a list of all sorts of resources that you can read and watch and listen to to understand racism more and how you can be all about anti-racism in your own lives and in the lives of the organizations that you serve. I bid you, take a look. I think it is necessary for us to unearth just a little bit of history before we get going. We need to do some holy naming. We need to name what this time and place looks like and feels like in our very marrow of our bones. Because I think right now we are facing a compounded communal trauma. I'll say that again. I think we are facing a compounded communal trauma. We hold the pandemic of COVID-19 over here, along with all the deaths that represent it. And then we hold the numerous deaths of people of color, particularly black people of color. And we are reminded again and again and again that black lives matter. Black lives matter. Now, before you turn off this video, you need to know that this is not a conservative versus liberal issue. It's just not. That's how it's been painted in the media. Those are the pictures that we see depicted on social media and on television sets. 
but we absolutely, positively, need to address the systemic underlying truth of racism in our nation, and now is the time to do it. I want to share with you a quote by a man named Frederick Douglass. He was born sometime in 1818. He was born a slave. He didn't actually know his birthday. I wrote his name right up there in case you want to remember it and look him up. It is said that later he chose his birthday to be February 14th of that same year. He tried to escape slavery and failed. And then he tried again and succeeded. He wrote these words while President Abraham Lincoln served. Hear these words. Where justice is denied, where poverty is enforced, where ignorance prevails, and where any one class is made to feel that society is an organized conspiracy to oppress, rob, and degrade them, neither persons nor property will be safe." Unquote. We have something that we need to work on. It was outlined for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It's called the way of love. And the way of love actually, my friends, is a spiritual practice. You just don't wake up one day and all of a sudden know how to do it well. You chip away at it by sending money to an organization that supports people, by buying groceries or non-perishables or toiletry items and delivering them to the midway or here and beyond. We do it one person at a time because one person makes the difference. The way of love, as the message put it by Eugene H. Peterson, said, we have three things to do, three things to do to lead us toward that deep and abiding relationship with God. You ready? Trust in God. Hope without abandon and love extravagantly. Love extravagantly. And the best of these three is love. These three, <laughs> these three. Holy Trinity Sunday is a day in the church here where we're reminded to enter into the holy mystery of the triune God. And I think it's reflected in those three expressions. Trust in God, hope without abandon, love extravagantly. Now, here's a part where I could wax on poetically about systematic theology and the doctrine of the Trinity and the origin of all the different creeds that we profess as people of faith, but I won't. And you're welcome. Instead, I want to tell you a little bit about an area of study that I find helpful and fascinating, one of which I've been studying for over 15 years. It's called Bowen Family Systems Theory. In this area of research, we have discovered that there is no such thing as a stable dyad. A dyad, D-Y-A-D, as you can see right here, is a sociological description that means two individuals. One, two. A dyad is not a stable relationship. We always need a third component to, con to uh, stabilize the relationship. And what that often looks like is a triangle. Super high-tech visual aids for this Trinity Sunday. Three brings stability. Two parents and a child. Two people and a dog. Two workmates and a work environment. Three brings stability. 
the third aspect of any relationship, according to that theory, is that that third entity allows anxiety to be released from the dyad. And anxiety, by the way, just simply means heightened emotion. Do any of you have heightened emotion these days? Maybe every time we turn on the news or when we turn off the news and we go for a walk and breathe in the Holy Spirit so that we can settle back down again so that we can re-enter in and see what's going on again in the news. And maybe it's time for you too to experience a silent retreat and listen to what the Spirit is calling you into in a deeper and more fulfilling way. Where we see threes, we see stability, even if it's dysfunctional at times. For that, all you have to do is look at any sitcom or comedy. Systems made simple for you. Where we see threes, we can often see strength that is greater than one can have alone just with one other entity. We see this in the Holy Trinity. God Creator, Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit, in this holy dance that they have together, the Creator God, the one who calls forth life, Jesus Christ, who brings us from death into new life, and the Holy Spirit, who breathes into us our very breath, Ruach, Numa, and also shows up as the paraclete, the advocate, the one who comes to our aid and walks alongside of us during turbulent times. And everyday living, quite frankly. What if we looked at our faith through those same lenses? as each of these three aspects of God. Because I think we need strength right now. I think we need stability in our hearts to grow that repentance, to turn into a different direction, to understand anew the life that we are being called to as people of faith. And I get that that's a tall order, but this is what we can do and we can do we can do hard things. People of God, we have been given a command, a mandate by God, by Jesus Christ, word made flesh, to love one another as I have loved you. And Jesus does this over and over and over again. Yes, through words, but also through deeds or actions. All you have to do is open up any of the Gospels and you'll see the expression of God's love flowing through Jesus as he cares for people who have no voice, who are on the margins, who are ostracized, who have been cast out from community. What he does is he allows them back into community in ways that reminds all of us that we are all beloved's God, we are all God's beloved children. You saw, and we'll see again at the end of this worship service, a video of images that contain threes. Do not confuse what you see with something that's called docetism where Jesus was seen only as a spiritual being and lives in the natural order of all living things by ancient mystics. Um, by the way, that's heresy. You're welcome, theologians among us who have joined us for worship. Amen. Uh, that's not the point of the video. The point of the video is to show the balance and beauty in the triune images. Like, the triangle there, like the images on your screen. Images that can help remind us that in turbulent times that God is with us, God is for us. God calls us into new life. God 
brings us from death into new life. God breathes in us the Holy Spirit and reminds us that we are not alone. Amen? Amen. All that aside, you may ask, what is God telling us to do during this compounded human tragedy that we are experiencing as a community? Well, that's a great question. I've already answered some of that if you're paying attention, but I want to go back to scripture again because we as children of God are called to love. Remember that's a spiritual practice. It takes practice, it takes time. You'll get there. Let's go for it one minute at a time, shall we? Hear God's word again and hear God's word in a way that is fresh and new and not used as a weapon. Ready? Love cares more for others than for self. Love isn't me first. Weirdly, love does not strut. Love doesn't keep scores of the sins of others. Love trusts God always. Love never dies. We don't see things clearly. We're squinting in a fog, peering through the mist. But eventually, we will see things more clearly. But until then, we have three things to do. Three. Ready? Trust in God, hope unswervingly, it's a big one, and love extravagantly. And the greatest of these three is to love. And for this commandment, this mandate that we have been given, to go therefore and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, loving them all the way, we can all say, thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you.
join me for the prayers of intercession. Our prayer response today is, Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Called into unity with one another in the whole creation, let us pray for our shared world. God of community, you form us as your church. Guide our bishops, pastors, and deacons as they lead the church in these trying times. We pray especially for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, and those who serve in the churchwide organization, and for our synod bishop, Patricia, and staff. With all the baptized, may they be strengthened to share the good news that the fullness of God dwells in and among us, even when we are physically separated. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all creation, you called everything into being. Sustain this world with your renewing care. Instill in us a deep wonder for the created world you've called good and a greater humility for our place within it. Kindle in us a creative and resilient spirit as we care for the earth and its creatures. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all counsel, all authority belongs to you. Encourage leaders to seek wisdom and respond compassionately to those most in need. Further the work of advocates who pursue justice in often ignored communities, like Chief Seattle, whom we commemorate today. Increase the desire for listening and collaboration amid rising tensions and mistrust. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of care, you created us in your image. May we recognize your likeness in one another, especially those who are isolated or in prison. Protect vulnerable children and adults from domestic violence or neglect. Give courage to caregivers, health workers, and all whose work ensures the safety and well-being of others. Console, heal, and nourish all in need, especially those we name at this time and space. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. God of connection, you call us to make your presence known. Accompany people of faith as they nurture relationships in new ways. As schools break for the summer and activities are canceled or changed, meet the needs of children in our churches and community. Provide support and companionship for the elderly. Equip our churches to respond to those needing food, housing, or other assistance. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. God of compassion, you comfort us in our grief with the promise of the resurrection. We give you thanks for the saints of all times and in our lives. Today, especially, we remember George Floyd. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Receive these prayers, O oh God, and those too deep for words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the power of the Holy Spirit, we all pray. Amen. As you can hear in the background, there's a little construction happening here at All Saints Lutheran Church. We're in the process of putting in a carport drop-off, and we're very excited about that. The footings are going in for the columns, and it's a complete disaster in the front, but it will be refreshed and looking wonderful by the time we return here in this distributed community uh, to come together and worship. In the meantime, we are still the church, and the church is functioning well. We are in these different locations, and yet you hear the good news of Jesus Christ proclaimed week after week, and we're delighted to bring those gifts to you. 
Um, for truly, it is a gift to receive the Holy Spirit and to be God's hands and feet in the world, albeit six feet apart. We're entering into the time of the offering now. If you would like to contribute to the carport drop-off, that is our Building Saints campaign, you can just put a memo on that, on your check. Uh, that would be fantastic. We are appreciating the fact that you are continuing to give both online and through check direct deposit. And now we have a new Stripe account, so if you want to get bonus points for your credit card, you can do that online. All of that is on our website, www.allsaintcg.org. Thank you, thank you, thank you for all the ways that you give back. And remember, if you need help, let us know, because we can help. We are the community of Christ joined together not by the walls of a church, but rather by the spirit that ties us all together. Thank you. So we invite you to, uh, as you consider the offerings that you're giving back and the ways that you are um, providing for and caring for your family, your friends, your community, uh, and us here at All Saints, uh, to sun yourselves and sing this song. Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God of justice and love, we give thanks to you that you illumine our way through life with the words of your Son. Give us the light we need, awaken us to the needs of others, and at the end bring all the world to your feast. Through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord and Savior Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And then again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. And now, gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we invite you to join hearts as we pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. People of God, these are the gifts of God for the people of God. So we invite you wherever you are to taste and see that God is good. And to remember that this is indeed the body of Christ given for you. And this is indeed and truly the blood of Christ shed for you. We invite you to share these gifts with one another wherever you are as we sing together, Here is Bread. Here is bread, here is wine, Christ is with us, he is with us. 
break the bread, taste the wine, Christ is with us here. In this bread, there is healing, in this cup is life forever. In this moment, by the Spirit, Christ is with us here. Here is grace, here is peace. Christ is with us, He is with us. Know His grace, find His peace. Feast on Jesus here. In this bread, there is healing. In this cup is life forever. In this moment, by the Spirit, Christ is with us here. Here we are, joined in one, Christ is with us, He is with us, we'll proclaim, till He comes, Jesus crucified. In this bread, there is healing, in this cup is life forever. In this moment, by the Spirit, Christ is with us here. People of God, may the body and the blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast, the body and the blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all who are in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. Now receive a blessing. People of God, the Holy Three, the Holy One, increase your hope strengthen your faith, deepen your love, and grant you deep, deep, and abiding peace. Amen. Now go forth into the world to serve God with gladness. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit, and let the people say, thanks be to God. Amen. Yeah.